Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In October of 1992, Apple released the PowerBook Duo 230, which has a 33 MHz processor and a 9.1 inch grayscale monochrome display. And this thing is also really tiny, and I managed to get it with a dock for $40 on eBay. Well, it's been sitting in the next room for actually over a year now. I think it's time we open it up and see if we can get it working. The PowerBook Duo is arguably one of the earliest sub-notebooks, which somewhat sacrificed functionality in an effort to be more portable. Thankfully, on first impressions, it appears as the seller did a good job packing the dock. I can only assume that the laptop is currently inside there as well. And after cutting through the foam, we get our first look at the rather yellowed plastic of the Duo dock. And here's the tiny PowerBook itself, loosely placed inside the dock. The unit appears to be largely intact, and thankfully the screen hinge isn't broken. It's also common for the batteries to leak acid and expand. This one has thankfully done neither of those things. Where the PowerBook Duo 230 lacks in ports, the Duo Dock Plus more than makes up for it. There's a 1.44 megabyte 3.5 inch floppy drive, plus a wide variety of connectivity on the back, including two Apple Nubus slots. The Duo Dock Plus originally cost 900 US dollars back in 1995. And apparently it actually has a 230 megabyte hard drive in there, so I guess we'll see when we take it apart. This didn't come with a power adapter, but I could thankfully use one of my yo-yo style ones that originally shipped with the iBook G3. The boot shine played and after a while the grayscale display sprung into life. Sadly, it can't find an operating system, or maybe the hard disk is dead. The little trackball also seems to scroll well thankfully. Mobile display technology has really come a long way in the last 29 years. It's also quite possible that it has degraded a bit over time as well. This was being sold as for parts not working, so it's quite relieving to see that at the very least it does turn on. And if I can't manage to fix the hard drive, I do have a spare that should fit in here, so fingers crossed we can get it working. Before I take apart the PowerBook, I thought I'd try it in the Duo dock. That didn't seem to do anything, so I took the cover off to make sure the laptop was seated correctly. It did turn on, and as before, it couldn't seem to find an install of macOS. The auto eject mechanism didn't seem to do anything sadly, even with the laptop turned off. I'm not sure if that can be fixed, but I will give it a shot. And to rule out the hard disk being blank and not dead, I made some macOS install floppies. I've linked the website I used to get these in the description below. And using a free trial of WinImage, I copied over the files. This program formats the floppies correctly so that it can boot off of them. I had a box of old disks, so I'm glad I can finally make use of them. With my fingers crossed, I put in the floppy disk. Relievingly, it did read the disk, but even though this Mac apparently shipped with OS 7.1, apparently I still need a newer version. So I went back and created disks for version 7.5. This time it showed the happy Mac icon and began to start the installer. Bruh. And then it crashed. Third time lucky. This time with version 7.1.1, it actually loaded into the installer floppy disk without any errors, but it didn't detect a hard disk, meaning the drive must be dead or faulty. So let's open up the laptop and see if we can work out the problem. Getting inside one of these power books looks to be pretty straightforward, requiring the removal of only a couple of Torx T8 screws. This then allows us to flip up the keyboard, revealing the internal components. From here, I release the keyboard connectors, and after a fair amount of trial and error, I was able to detach the top casing. The 2.5 inch SCSI drive is underneath this blue cover. My guess is it shields the drive from heat or electrical interference. It turns out that the spare SCSI drive I had lying around was exactly the same model and capacity. I think I pulled it from a PowerBook about 15 years ago, and when turned on, it didn't seem to find an operating system. And when I listened closely, I couldn't hear the drive spin up at all, so we've likely got two dead drives, and that's not ideal. But I'm not giving up yet. It's time to open up the original drive that was inside this laptop. Previously, I managed to revive a 30-year-old laptop hard disk by moving the heads which seemed to have been stuck. The hard drive heads are small copper coils at the end of the arm that move over the magnetic storage platters, but even after moving the heads a bit, they still wouldn't move. There was, however, another broken PowerBook I could pull a hard disk from. This is the PowerBook 170. While older, it does use the same SCSI hard disk interface. Does the hard disk in it work though? It's only 40 megabytes, but unlike the other two drives, this clearly spins up and you can hear the heads moving. But once again, the system did not recognize the drive. 
So I asked on Twitter and was told about a compatible SCSI to SD card adapter made by Bruce who runs recappermac.com. A short time later the adapter complete with a macOS installation arrived at my door. And if you're after one of these in Australia, you should check out Bruce's website, which I've linked below. And inside the anti-static bag, we've got the very cool little drive. Now, here comes the moment of truth. You have no idea how much I was hoping this would work, and I was a bit worried when I saw the floppy disk icon show up, but seconds later, it started to load into macOS. And taking a look at the specifications, it has 12 megabytes of RAM, which should be more than enough to run macOS 7.5. And there's also heaps of games and software installed, which is a bonus. What about the Duo Dock though? Well, since it was a sunny day, I thought I'd try retro brighting the yellowed casing. After giving the surface a much needed wipe down, I began by applying 40 vol hydrogen peroxide to the surface with a brush. And on top, I used some cling wrap to stop the surface from drying out. And throughout the day, I made sure to pat down the air bubbles to hopefully avoid uneven whiteness. The Duo Dock itself nearly has a full computer worth of components inside, and I'm hoping I can work out why it fails to eject the laptop. And to get into the dock, you've only got to remove a few screws. Then the whole assembly slides forward and up. And this also confirms that it doesn't have a hard disk installed. Taking a closer look at the mechanical eject mechanism, it's apparent that the release pins are misaligned. So let's open it up and find the problem. With the metal plate off, I can see that the plastic that holds the release mechanism has snapped off. This would have caused the whole thing to get stuck. And with the failed part removed, I clean off the grease with isopropyl alcohol before I glued the two pieces back together. The way this works is quite simple. The motor spins, which turns this mechanical cam. As it advances, it moves the release mechanism forward and back, as well as up and down slightly, and the tension is kept by the spring on the back. It knows what position it's in using this protruding piece on the cam, which triggers one of these switches, letting the dock know it's in the in or out position. And I believe it knows when a laptop is inserted by this switch being pressed downwards. And while it's open, I thought I'd give it a dust out. I would have removed the power supply as well, but it's held in place by some plastic clips which sounded like they were about to break when I tried moving them. I really would like to know how much this dock was actually used. I've got a feeling they probably stopped using it after the eject mechanism failed, which would explain why the circuit board didn't have much dust on it. And yes, you can actually plug in a full-size SCSI drive and there's even a power connector right here on the board. And here are the full-size Nubus card slots, which can be used for even further hardware expansion. I then gave the rest of the casing a cleaning with some eucalyptus oil. If I'm correct, what I repaired should allow the laptop to eject automatically once again. So far, so good. It latched on and docked the PowerBook. But will it eject? I can relievingly say that, yes, it sure will. With that good news, let's clean out the PowerBook Duo. The rubber parts were surprisingly still really strong, but a little bit grubby in appearance. And since the new hard disk doesn't have any mounting threads, I simply held it in place with double-sided tape. I think the rubber strips are on the sides to avoid scratching it when you put it in the dock. And now the top casing can be clipped back in place. There are small feet that raise the keyboard and also cover some of the few ports actually on this laptop. In fact, there are basically next to no ports on this PowerBook at all. And next I gave the casing a wipe down with some eucalyptus oil. Honestly, there is next to nowhere, so I'm wondering if this was primarily used inside the dock. The screen, however, was pretty dirty. I made sure to be very gentle as I'd hate to damage this very uncommon laptop. And any gunk built up on top easily came off with some spray and wipe. Let's try using this 29 year old Mac, which looks a lot cleaner now. While the grayscale display doesn't look particularly good, it at least works and the laptop is totally fine to run lemmings. The goal of this game is to get the lemmings to the end of the stage, but I find it just as fun to blow them all up. Another classic Mac game from the early 90s is Prince of Persia. The fact that the backgrounds don't scroll really helps make this look a lot better on the display. It runs fine, honestly. And how could I resist making some artwork in Photoshop? This is version 1.0, and quite a lot is different from how it is now. I looked everywhere for a screw to help keep the display assembly together, but since I couldn't find one that was long enough and matched the thread, for now I simply put a bit of tape on here. This is a really cool, tiny laptop, even smaller than the PowerBook 100. And if you wanted to connect a floppy drive, you could use one of these adapters. Thankfully, it also gives you an ADB port, allowing you to connect a keyboard and mouse. But I'd much rather be using this, which gives the PowerBook Duo the ability to display thousands of colors and one megabyte of video memory, as well as heaps of other features. The whitening of the case I did wasn't perfect, a little uneven, but overall an improvement. And this wouldn't be a classic Mac video if I didn't play all the annoying alert sounds. One of the games Bruce installed on the SD card was this weird Mario clone. 
it's pretty hilarious, honestly. And one of the 3D games on here is Chuck Yeager's Air Combat. It's a pretty interesting flight sim from the early 90s. I don't fully understand the controls, but I understand enough to crash the plane. The PowerBook Duo and accompanying dock are a cool piece of history. On its own, it's an astonishingly small laptop from 1992, and together, it makes for a great retro Mac experience. Thank you very much for watching. It's honestly been a lot of fun taking apart this laptop, and it's hard to believe that it turns 29 in a few days' time. Anyway, if you've liked the video, feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.